This episode is brought to you by Hasa. Liquid is clearly better. Liquid chlorine is the highest purity, works immediately, has no added cyanuric acid or calcium, and it will leave your pool safe, clean, and clear. And by the bottom feeder professional grade battery powered vacuum system, it sucks to clean pools, so cleaning pools sucks less. Get $100 off with code DVB100. This episode is brought to you by Skimmer, the number one pool service software in North America. With Skimmer, you can streamline your schedule, grow your revenue, and keep your customers coming back with five-star service. Whether you're a one-person operation or an established team, Skimmer is your partner in success. Visit GetSkimmer.com slash PoolGuy to try Skimmer for free for 30 days. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Hi, welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to continue my talk about the industry losing sodium bromide as a algaecide that we relied on. And I'm going to cover some alternate algaecides. In the episode prior to this, I talked about why sodium bromide was banned. I'll just give a brief summary of that here also. And I talked about borates and phosphorate removers and how to use those in place of an algaecide and in place of sodium bromide. Are you a pool service pro looking to take your business to the next level? Join the Pool Guy Coaching Program. Get expert advice, business tips, exclusive content, and get direct support from me. I'm a 35-year veteran in the industry. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, I've got the tools to help you succeed. Learn more at swimmingpoollearning.com. Again, if you want to hear the full three or four minute recap of why sodium bromide is not allowed in the pool industry or not. I wouldn't say allowed, but the suppliers aren't carrying it. And because the EPA has kind of cracked down on it, it's because the sodium bromide can turn into bromate under certain conditions, with with which is a known carcinogen out there. And again, you can listen to the recap in the previous episode. I'll have the there's actually the link in the description here for you for that episode. But in this one here, and I talked again in the last episode about borates and phosphate removers. And I'm going to continue today by talking about the current algaecides on the market today that are great alternatives to sodium bromide. And I haven't been using sodium bromide anyway for a long time because of the other algaecides, because of borates and phosphate removers that are available. I find that they were superior anyway to sodium bromide. And I found that switching to those will be something that will be smooth and easy for anyone who's using sodium bromide. Polarex Plus is a algaecide, an EPA-registered algaecide. Important that it has the EPA distinction. Not all algaecides out there on the market, especially the mineral technologies, are EPA-registered. It's also NSF-50 certified, which means that it's safe or it's been independently certified by a an independent company, which costs a lot of money, by the way, to do, and it's safe for commercial pool use or public pool use. So Polarex Plus is a mineral that is chelated. So what I mean by chelated, and this is used in the medical field for years, so this means that the mineral is kind of bound and won't fall out of solution to stain the pool, which is really important because I'm going to cover copper algaecides a little bit later, but the chelating process is one of the key parts of the Polar X Plus unit itself, which makes it really effective what it contains in the mineral is copper, silver, and zinc. And these minerals, of course, work as a preventative long-term algae control because the polar X unit itself is something you put in at the beginning of the pool season. And the minerals typically last four to six months. As they pass back through the unit, the polar X unit, there's a, a cage that is in, a plastic cage. And inside the unit is an anode and that kind of recharges the minerals as it passes back over it and this is why it lasts four to six months and that's why you need that polar x unit you can't just add the minerals to the water that's what gives it the long lasting um, ability is that so it's great for preventative care of algae and long-term care you simply place it in the skimmer basket or pump basket and it reduces the need for any other chemicals or algaecides that you want to add to the pool It also will allow you to use 50% less chlorine in the pool 
because it allows the chlorine to work effectively on the things that it's not fighting, which is the algae or microalgae in the pool. Something to keep in mind with the Polarex unit is that it's something that you sell to the customers one time at the beginning of the season, which is really convenient. You can do a one-time Polarex charge and charge them, you know, $100 for the black unit, 80 bucks for the blue unit or something like that. And it's going to be something that you don't have to worry about and it works the whole season long. So it's a great, in my opinion, algicide because you're not adding something every week and it does prevent algae in the pool. It also will kill not only mustard algae, which is probably the most common algae here in my area, it also kill green algae and it will actually kill black algae, but it takes about three or four weeks to start to see the effect on black algae because black algae is pretty durable and it does take some time for the pool eggs to work on black algae. They're great also for green to, green to clean pools. If you have a green pool and you wanted to use the Polar X in there as part of your algicide because sodium bromide was great for green pool cleanup as well, the Polar X will work just as effectively. You would want to get a bigger unit. So if you have a 15,000 gallon pool and it's completely green, I would definitely go with the black and white unit, which is rated for 20 to 30,000 gallons because you're going to need that 12 ounces of minerals. So the the um, blue and white unit has 8 ounces. They have smaller units available as well. I'm not exactly sure on the ounces of the small ones. But the blue and white has 8 ounces. And then the black and white has 12 ounces. You're going to need an extra mineral because a lot of those are going to be used up in a green pool cleanup. And you can also add a booster. So if you wanted to get the blue and white one and add a booster right away when you're doing the green pool cleanup, that's fine as well. And I still like shocking the pool and bringing the coin level up to, you know, 20 or 30 parts per million, even with the Polar X unit. Even though on their website it says you don't need to, I find it's still really effective to bring the coin level up really high. No one's using the pool anyway, and it's something that I found to be effective in the green pool cleanup with the Polar X. So it can be used as a substitute for sodium bromide in a green pool cleanup, making it a great alternative, I think, to sodium bromide. You want to replace the unit every season mainly because the anode gets kind of calcified and doesn't work as well, and the minerals don't get recharged as that starts to wear down. It's something that you have to do, and it's okay because the customers will be expecting the annual Polar X charge. Now, if you have a longer season, or if the pool maybe was compromised, or the pool has an algae issue continuously, then the Polar X definitely will cure it, but the algae may be something that this pool constantly will have a problem with. You may need a booster during the season to kind of help that out. I usually don't use the boosters much on with my pools, but sometimes you will need one. And sometimes you, and, more, and again, and more than likely, you probably won't need one during the season if the season isn't more than four months long, which in most areas, except maybe parts of Florida and Texas, the season is only about four or five months long. So I would consider Polar X a copper-based algicide because the main ingredient is copper, although it is chelated, so it won't fall out of solution and stain the pool. I'm going to transition to some purely copper-based algicides. Now, you don't want to use one of these with a Polar X, of course, because then you're adding too much copper to the water. And Polar X, of course, works best when the copper level is at zero in most cases, one thing I, you should note that when you do put the Polar X unit in, if you take your water testing to Leslie's or another pool store, it's going to show an elevated copper level. It may show a really high copper level or just an elevated level. And that's just because once you add the Polar X unit, since it's chelated, the photometer or any tester won't be able to register the copper level properly in there. It's going to kind of be kind of wonky with the Polar X unit, Polar X plus unit in the pool and you don't want to use a copper algicide in conjunction with Polar X because then you would have too much copper in the water and then the minerals will fall out of solution and can stain the pool at that point. But it's not because the Polar X unit itself stained the pool. It's because there's copper in the water and there's just too much of it to be chelated and it's going to fall out of solution. And it wouldn't be the mineral itself unless you've added too big of a unit to the pool. And then you may have a problem with some staining because you use too large of a Polar X unit for the size of the pool based on the gallons. So just be careful that you size the Polar X unit correctly for your pool. Now copper algicides, they are about 7% copper usually in their formula. All different kind of brands. You have, of course, Swim Trine Plus, which is sold 
at a lot of the pool supply places. HTH makes a super algicide, which is a copper based. A BioGuard also has one BioGuard backup. And then you have Leslie's copper algicide. And then you have a few other brands that maybe you don't recognize that as copper. Simply turn the, the bottle over to the side and you can see what it says there if it's copper or not. You can usually tell right away if you're using a copper algicide by the color of the product when you put it in the pool. Also, a lot of them will tell you to mix it in a five gallon bucket of water because you can't really just spray it in the pool. It may stain the pool surface because you're putting a large amount in the pool and may fall to the bottom or the side. It's usually a blue or bl blue green color. I think blue green, I think is more of a app color for it. And the reason why it's blue is because, or blue green, is because the copper ions itself, the C lowercase u 2 plus, is a natural blue tint. That's why the Polar X minerals are blue. That's why the Polar X booster is a blue tint, because that's kind of the color of the copper itself. And of course, I think Swim Trine is probably the, the bluest one out of all of them. The problem with using too much copper algicide is that the copper level can build up in the pool and once it reaches a certain point, it can fall out of solution and stain the pool surface itself. Typically, if the copper level in the pool gets above 0 0.3 or 0 0.5 parts per million, you have a pretty increased risk of the copper falling out. If the pH gets high in the pool also, like 7.8 or above or 8.0, the high pH also will lower how soluble the copper is in the water. It's kind of weird, but if the pH gets to that level, then the copper can drop out of the pool, especially, again, if you're above 0 0.3 parts per million of copper in the pool. And also, high alkalinity contributes to the copper dropping out of solution. So all of these are things to be concerned about using a copper algicide. Now, why would you use a copper algicide in the first place? With these kind of built-in concerns, of course, you're adding copper to the water and there's nothing that's chelating it, so it can stain the pool. Well, the reason why you would want to use a copper algicide is because it's extremely effective. If you ever use one, you know that it's extremely effective in killing, you know, green and mustard algae. And by the way, copper algicides will actually kill black algae. Although you have this kind of fine line that you're walking on that I mentioned here, with the pH being high, alkalinity being high, and the copper level increasing to a point where it could stain the pool. So maybe getting rid of the black algae with copper, algicides, the side effect would be the pool staining. Not to worry, because I'll address a way that you can remove the copper from the pool safely as well. So again, it's a really effective algicide, and it's something that you may want to turn towards if you're not using a Polar X, if you're not using borates or not using a phosphor remover, the copper algicide is an option out there. I think a lot of homeowners like it because it's highly effective. And a lot of homeowners don't know about the side effects of it. The fact that, you know, an elevated copper level could cause staining in the pool and cause a drop out of solution. So how do you treat copper that has fallen out of solution? It's pretty easy. You use a metal sequestering agent like Jack's Magic, either their magenta or blue stuff. And then you can also use the Sealator 4.0. You put that in the skimmer basket, and this will actually pull the copper ions out of the pool water up to 0 0.4 parts per million. So if your copper level is at 0 0.5 parts per million, it may not be able to pull it all out because it's higher than what the unit is rated for. That's why they call it the Sealator 4.0, because it pulls out copper to a certain level. And you may need to utilize this if you have a high copper level in the pool and you're noticing staining in the pool. Metal sequestering agents in conjunction with the Sealator 4.0 will pull the copper out of the pool over a probably a four week period. Another copper based algicide, and it may not even look like an algicide, it doesn't look like an algicide I should say, is the Remington Solar Sun Shock. And this is a device that has a solar panel on top. It's a white circle. I think about 10 inches in diameter or so. So this device this device floats in the pool and the solar panels catch the sunlight. So what happens is that the solar panels will convert the sunlight into a very low electrical voltage current. This is an interesting product, by the way. It's actually pretty good. It is highly effective. You can get it at Costco. 
and you can buy it there. You can buy the anodes as well that you can replace on the bottom. So inside the unit, the metal electrode is made of copper, and basically the electricity flows through the water between the electrodes. The copper ions are slowly released into the pool. So again, this doesn't have any chelating process. Uh, properties. So you have to keep an eye on the copper level. They do come with copper test strips. At least I think they still do. And you can test the copper level. If the copper level gets too high above 0.2, just take the Remington sole out of the pool for a week or two until the copper levels are low enough and put it back in. With a copper level, with a continuous um, copper level in the pool, the algae won't be able to form and grow. And you can use less chlorine as well because again, this product is also a chlorine enhancer. So it disrupts the algae cells because the ions are floating around in the water. Uh, this this product is actually pretty effective. And again, you may want to try this out instead of using a copper algicide. And you can lower your chlorine use again by about 50%. Now the copper bar, the electrode, builds up scale and gunk. It, it really does get pretty gunky and you want to clean it every week or two. There's a brush included. It's really messy. You get blue stuff all over the place, so or like a green kind of color material everywhere. So make sure you clean it somewhere where you, and wear gloves when you clean it. They also have a cleaning solution they sell. You can just actually put that in, it, put the anode in a jar and let the cleaning solution work. It's also an effective way to clean it. So it is a pretty low maintenance type way of um, low maintenance, which means you have to clean it every week or so with the brush. It's not a big deal, in my opinion, to clean it off, and it's something that is highly effective. So that may be an alternative. And the question arises, why can't you just put a piece of copper pipe in the skimmer? Now, this is an old trick, old pool guy trick, and some people may still use this trick. But you can put a small piece of copper pipe in the skimmer. It'll be effective, that's for sure. And one of the things that you, one of the downsides, or actually there's more than one downside, is that you have no control how much copper is being released into the pool. So if you have too small of a piece of copper pipe in there, it may not be effective. If you have too large of a copper piece of pipe in there, you may get some blue-green staining on the plaster. Again, it's going to be sensitive to pH fluctuations. So if the pH gets above 7.8, the copper may stain the pool and also high alkalinity. So there's really nothing that's chelating the copper, which is the copper pipe in the skimmer basket. So you definitely don't want to do that because it can also damage the heat exchanger and a heater. It can maybe interfere with the salt cell. I'm not sure about that, but it's a possibility since there's a piece of metal in the skimmer. It's not really as effective as the products that are out there. You have the Remington Solar Sunshock. You have the Pooler X Mineral Technology. You also have minerals. I probably should have touched on this, not the Nature 2 system. And I'll cover that probably in the next one since I kind of ran out of time here in this one. So I'll continue this and talk about alternate algaecides besides copper in the next one that will take the place of the sodium bromide that you may be familiar with using in the pool. If you're looking for part one of this podcast, you can find it going to my website, swimmingpoollearning.com, clicking on the podcast icon on top, subscribing to my podcast, or subscribing to my YouTube channel, you'll get these podcasts sent directly to you, and you'll be able to keep track of the parts of these, of course. Each one kind of is a standalone part anyway, so it's really not super critical to listen to all these, but it's a good idea to listen to all of them together because I think it does build the, build on each other, the different algaecides out there that are available. And if you're looking to join my coaching program, you can learn more at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a rest of your week and God bless. This episode is brought to you by Hasa, providing products that deliver clean, healthy water for every aspect of everyday life. The bottom feeder battery powered vacuum system, portable, powerful, and only weighs 12 pounds. And Skimmer. Get Skimmer, America's number one pool service software. Podcast listeners can try Skimmer for free at getskimmer.com backslash poolguy.